Well, hi, you guys. Welcome to our Thursday newsletter. We're going to do it on video again. Uh, and it's a little bit of an echo chamber in this room, but I think it's the best place for today because I have some really quick things that I'd like to say. Uh, six things, in fact, I'd like to remind you of or inform you of, of things that are coming up, especially as we enter into September. Now, I don't know if you know, but we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, and who knows if we're in the middle of it? We might be near the end. Maybe we're in the middle. Maybe we're still in the beginning parts. None of us totally know, but we're trying to work this whole thing out. So I just want you to be informed about what we're going to be trying. We're adjusting and figuring things out a little bit more at a time uh, because we're not all knowing either. We don't get it all, and we're just trying to do the best we can, just like what I think most people are, uh, just trying to do the best job they can uh, to figure out what people ought to do. Uh, and there are people who carry incredible responsibilities to make decisions. Um, I feel for the superintendent of the school districts who have had to make very difficult decisions that affect tens of thousands of families. Um, for even our government leaders who make decisions that affect hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Um, and so here at Quest, uh, it's much smaller. And so, but we're trying to make decisions that affect people. So there are a few things I want to bring you up to speed on. So the very first one is this, and it's after having talked quite a bit and sought medical expertise from people that we have been trusting along the way about are the protocols that we use on Sunday morning still necessary? Uh, do we still keep doing them exactly the way we're doing them? But some of the medical advice we got is saying, you know what, uh, probably still having people wear masks because that's the county mandate that you're supposed to wear them both in public in, in public places, whether indoors or outdoors, to wear them in face uh, covering. So we're going to continue doing that. But uh, it's really difficult to be in church and not be able to sing when there's music. It just feels awkward. It feels weird. And the medical expertise that we've sought has suggested, you know, singing uh, behind our face masks or our face coverings is a very reasonable thing to do. So we want you to know that in order, in case it might affect the way you either want to participate or not participate, but we anticipate on September 6th, uh, that's a week from this coming Sunday, uh, that we'll say, hey, you know what, if, if that's something you desire to do, go ahead and do it. Uh, now, we don't want to be real controlling or parental about any of this, but we do want to be consistent and give directives that help people. Because that's why we do this, right, is to help. I don't wear a face mask for my sake. I wear a face mask or a face covering for your sake. And you wear it, not for your sake, but for my sake. Uh, so our motivation here is to love one another, treat one another with the kind of uh, respect and the kind of dignity uh, that we want to treat each other. So, uh, But on the 6th of September, we're probably going to kind of start doing some more musical things. Uh, and we'll start with saying, hey, why don't you sing behind your face mask if you desire to. Uh, the second thing we want you to know is starting... In September, we'll be doing a new series. Uh, we're finished the, the one we're doing now, What and Why, uh, answers that are grounded in faith and hope. And we're going to go back into the book of Matthew. And then in the second, the eighth and ninth chapters of Matthew, Jesus begins to reveal in things that he does uh, his authority. Because at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 7, it says that he, uh, they were astonished at the authority with which he spoke. Well, you think you were astonished at that. We're really going to be astonished when we see what he did uh, and the way he interacted with people and the power that he, he really had. So that will be starting in September also. The third thing is we want you to know that one of our most important things we're doing this year is wanting to help be people be connected. Uh, disconnection is really not good for anybody. And so we're going to try to up our connection quotient quotient. And so we'll be uh, exposing all the different groups that will be starting in September in places where you can plug in and be a part of that. So we'll be looking forward to that. The fourth thing I want to tell you about is we also, uh, normally we do a, a baptism palooza, uh, which would have already happened a few weeks ago. But we plan on having or hope to have a baptism service on a Sunday evening coming up late in September. Uh, and so I'd like to throw it out that anybody needs or wants to be baptized, to let us know. Please contact me uh, or contact Jonathan or Angela 
whatever you need to do so that we can maybe do this baptism. And here I want to encourage you. Uh, it's not necessary for salvation. Uh, it doesn't uh, do anything extra. But it is a step of obedience to what the Lord called us to. But it is also an incredible proclamation of your faith of saying, I want to identify with Christ. I already have given my life to him, and I identify with his death by going under the water and by his life by coming out of the water. And I would encourage each of you to be baptized. Uh, if you haven't been, this might be a great chance to do it together. So let us know. We'd like to do it in late September, like I said, on a Sunday evening here at Quest. Uh, so uh, the next thing we want to give you a heads up is we feel like it's coming to the time where we need to reinstitute uh, our Quest Kids program on a Sunday morning. Uh, it'll have to be adjusted. It'll have to be unique. Uh, but we see ourselves headed towards the 1st of October of, of reinstituting a kids program on Sunday morning. Now, that'll take up the whole bottom level. Uh, and because we have social distancing upstairs, uh, that may mean that we have to go to two services. Uh, so there's a possibility that we'd be going to a 9 o'clock and a 1030. We're trying to feel these things out, but I want to give you a heads up that there may be some changes going on in order to facilitate more people being connected and being involved. So the last thing I want to encourage you to do is to continue to pray. Um, now, I don't know about you, it would be great if we were self-sufficient human beings and never had any need of God in any way. But that's just not reality. The reality is that we need Him. And the, thing, the great thing is He offers us to come before Him and to pray, and to be engaged with Him and to talk through all the stuff of life. So I want to just encourage you to continue to have prayer be a significant part of your life. And not just formal times, but informal times. Pray at all times uh, is what the scriptures tell us. And, and so, but in a structured way together, we had instituted prayer one one one. one You pray, pray at one o'clock for one person for one minute. We want to encourage you to continue to do that. And then we instituted two one one. That two, at two o'clock, you pray for racial reconciliation and to pray for one minute. And obviously these issues are continuing to swirl around in our culture and in our country. And it is troubling and it is difficult and it is hard. And that we have a God who wants to reconcile people and wants to redeem people and relationships. So I want to encourage you at two o'clock for one minute to pray for racial reconciliation. And I'd like to add one, uh, if you think about it, and it's a pretty easy one, easy to remember, that at nine o'clock, whether it be in the morning or in the evening, to 911, that we would pray for first responders. We pray for those in the fire departments. We pray for those uh, in the hospital areas. And we pray for the police departments in our, in our community, in our state, in our nation, because this is a very, very difficult time in their world. And so let's be praying for first responders, 911. So I'll be praying at 111, one person, one minute, um, at 1 o'clock. And 211, at 2 o'clock, pray for racial reconciliation for a minute. Do it every day. If we're disciplined, we, can, we really will matter. And then also pray at 911 for the first responders. All right? Hey, we're looking forward to this coming season uh, as we navigate all the craziness of our world and of our community. But that God has never changed. He is still the same, and he is about his work. This didn't surprise him. He's not shocked, and he's not dismayed, but he is uniquely doing something in our lives and in our midst. So trust him, engage him, love him, love other people, be, be engaged and assertive with the love that we have for people. All right? All right. Take care, you guys. We'll see you Sunday. Looking forward to it. Be well.